Welcome to Second Sight. Suppose you're on a game show, and you're given the choice of three doors, behind one door is a car. Behind the other doors, there are goats. <coughs> you don't know what is behind any of those doors, but the host does know. Let's say you pick a door, say number one, and the host, who knows what's behind the doors, opens another door, say number three which has a goat. <coughs> he then asks you, do you want to pick door number two? So in such situations, is it to your advantage to switch your choice? Or should you stay with your original choice? Remember the host doesn't care if you win or lose. What do you think? Switch your choice. Or stay with your original choice. Or do you think that it doesn't make any difference as there are only two choices left? I will give you 10 seconds to think. Time is up. Most people will say that it will make no difference whether you switch or not. That there is a 50-50 chance of choosing the car. This sounds sensible, but it's not correct. The real answer is that you should always switch. There is a 66% chance of winning if you switch. It turns out that there are only 9 different combinations of choices and outcomes. Therefore, I can just show them all to you and we can calculate the percentage for each outcome. The solution seems more intuitive with 25 doors rather than 3. In this case, there are 24 doors with goats behind them and one door with a car. After the player picks a door, the host then opens 23 of the remaining doors with the goats, and leaves one goat door and one car door unopened. You should ask yourself, how likely it is that, if given some 25 doors, you manage to pick the right one initially. <coughs> Writer Marilyn Vosavant, born 1946, has an IQ of 228, one of the highest ever recorded. Someone with a normal intelligence will score somewhere around 100 on an IQ test. Based on the famous television game show Let's Make a Deal, the problem presented before, is known as the Monty Hall problem. Before I show you the blue one, what goes with wax? You thought it was a car, you were right! To solve the energy crisis. It became famous as a question from a reader's letter quoted in Marilyn Vos Savant's Ask Marilyn column in a reading magazine in 1990. Despite the problem's deceptive simplicity, some of the world's brightest minds, MIT professors, renowned mathematicians, MacArthur Genius Fellows have had trouble grasping its answer. For decades, it has sparked intense debates in classrooms and lecture halls. When first presented with the Monty Hall problem, an overwhelming majority of people assume that each door has an equal probability and conclude that switching does not matter. Out of 228 subjects in one study, only 13% chose to switch. In his book The Power of Logical Thinking, cognitive psychologist Massimo Biotelli Palmarini writes, no other statistical puzzle comes so close to fooling all the people all the time and even Nobel physicists systematically give the wrong answer, and that they insist on it, and they are ready to berate and print those who propose the right answer. When Vo Savant politely responded to a reader's inquiry on the Monty Hall problem, a then relatively unknown probability puzzle, she never could have imagined what would unfold. Though her answer was correct, she received over 10,000 letters, many from noted scholars including nearly 1,000 PhDs including a pair from the deputy director of the Center for Defense Information, and a research mathematical statistician from the National Institutes of Health informing her that she was a harebrained idiot. What began for Vosavant was a nightmarish journey, filled with name-calling, gender-based assumptions, and academic persecution, such as, You blew it, and you blew it big. Since you seem to have difficulty grasping the basic principle at work here, I'll explain. After the host reveals a goat, you now have a 1 in 2 chance of being correct. Whether you change your selection or not, the odds are the same. There is enough mathematical illiteracy in this country, and we don't need the world's highest IQ propagating more. Shame. 
May I suggest that you obtain and refer to a standard textbook on probability before you try to answer a question of this type again? You are utterly incorrect about the game show question, and I hope this controversy will call some public attention to the serious national crisis in mathematical education. If you can admit your error, you will have contributed constructively towards the solution of a deplorable situation. How many irate mathematicians are needed to get you to change your mind? You made a mistake, but look at the positive side. If all those PhDs were wrong, the country would be in some very serious trouble. Maybe women look at math problems differently than men. You are the goat. <coughs> the outcry was so tremendous that Vosavon was forced to devote three subsequent columns to explaining why her logic was correct, even in the wake of her well-stated, clear responses. She continued to be berated. I still think you're wrong, wrote one man. Nearly a year later, there is such a thing as female logic. Paul Erdas, one of the most prolific mathematicians in history, remained unconvinced until he was shown a computer simulation demonstrating Vosavon's predicted result. An exercise proposed by Vosavon to better understand the problem was soon integrated in thousands of classrooms across the nation. Computer models were built that corroborated her logic and support for her intellect was gradually restored. Whereas only 8% of readers had previously believed her logic to be true, this number had risen to 56% by the end of 1992, writes Vosavon among academics, 35% initial support rose to 71%. Among the new believers was Robert Sachs, a math professor at George Mason University, who'd originally written a nasty letter to Vosavant, telling her that she blew it and offering to help explain. After realizing that he was, in fact, incorrect, he felt compelled to send her another letter at this time, repenting his self-righteousness. After removing my foot from my mouth I'm now eating humble pie. I vowed as penance to answer all the people who wrote to castigate me. It's been an intense professional embarrassment. More than 32 years later, arguments over the Monty Hall problem's semantics and Vosavant's response still pervade mainly centering around the intricacies of the host's actions. Our brains are just not wired to do probability problems very well, so I'm not surprised there were mistakes. Stanford Stats professor Percy Diaconis told a reporter, years ago, a study published in the Journal of Comparative Psychology, pigeons repeatedly exposed to the problem with grain as the price show that they rapidly learn to always switch still don't quite get the Monty Hall problem. Try your own experiment at home. Put a toy car under one of three boxes or one of three upside down cups and play the game some 20 times or more. Thank you. Click on the subscribe button below for more interesting videos.